Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary for the day of 799 for the 2nd of May. Uh, we're going to start off with Frontline Changes report uh, uh, because the, the, the Frontline Changes is not that many so I'm going to integrate, uh, I'm not going to like separate it into two separate videos. The first one is going to be as Kaislevka, Kotia Rivka as well and then Ocheritine. So these are the Frontline Change. Over at Kaislevka, over at the Kupians front, uh, the Russian forces continue to expand their control over in this area here as you can see uh, the, the battle for Kaislevka continues a bit slower uh, they are unable to break through quickly over in this uh, western part of uh, Kaislevka as the Ukrainian forces seem to be uh, holding quite well there. But the Russian forces have entered into Kotya Rivka. So uh, this has been talked about for some time. So finally we now have this confirmation with the Russian forces capturing around 15% of the settlement right now around there. And they, are, they also managed to, let me let me pull up this a bit. I think I have to zoom out. So the Russian forces also managed to you know, take a, take a more areas here, not just around the settlement, but around this uh, southeast and uh, east southern part of Kotya Rivka as the Russians start to push in closer. And uh, as you can probably see, there is the entrenchment around here. Uh, if you zoom in, you can see there is actually a entrenchment. Uh, so the Russians probably take, took already uh, no, half of it at least, if not all of it, with the Russians now closing in at Kotya Rivka. So, this is the frontline change over at Kaislevka and Kotya Rivka in the Kupians front. The next frontline change is over at the DFK front. So uh, the development around here continues with the Russian forces now pushing uh, towards Akanhelske from Ocheritine. So with the Russian forces taken uh, this uh, this site, the village, you no, know, uh, just nearby of Ocheritine. And in a way, there is some kind of encirclement around here that is developing. It's unclear if there's any... Uh, Ukrainian forces around here and the Russian forces have already taken the other side so this encirclement is about to close. So uh, we will continue to monitor the front line of uh, the situation. So I can't help scale so far and it's still to be seemingly under Ukrainian control for now. And uh, this front line change is by the Ukrainian mapping. So we're going to go into the strategic and tactical reporting and uh, the first thing first is of course as usual at the southern front over at Kherson front there is still fighting being reported at Krinky, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. The Russians are still allegedly attacking Krinky. Honestly, I don't believe the Russians are attacking uh, because there is so little to fight for. I don't think the Russians should be wasting soldiers there. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Opposite the shore uh, of this uh, Dnipro River, the Russian forces are bombarding Ivanivka and Tiahinka. Information coming from the Russian Defense Ministry. Uh, and now uh, we zoom out, uh, there is also bombardments reported over at Mihailivka, uh, also along the Dnipro River, uh, river but you no know, further north, uh, closer to the uh, Kriviri region. So that's all for the uh, Kherson front. We move into the Zaporizhia front. Over at the Zaporizhia front, there is only actions being reported. Uh, as Shaling reported at Orikhiv, according to the Russian Defense Ministry, and then at Robotine, the Russian forces are allegedly attacking, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. However, uh, that's all we know. Uh, there's nothing else happening over at the Zaporizhia front. We move into the uh, Donetsk front. So this is the Donetsk front. Uh, at the Donetsk front, we have fighting reported at um, uh, at the Velika Novosilka region. Uh, in uh, towards Makarivka, Ukrainian forces counter attack at Staro Mayoske, Russian Russian forces attacking at Uruzaine. So, uh, so this is the current situation over at the Velika Novosilka sector. Very interesting developments around here. Uh, there is no updates uh, regarding any more further frontline change. Uh, Ryba simply acknowledged the frontline change reported by the Deep State UA. Moving away from the the Velika Novosilka sector, uh, we go into the. Uh, Vodian, Konstantinivka, Novo Mihailivka region. Russian forces are attacking towards Vodian. They are attacking towards uh, Konstantinivka as well as Paraskovievka. So, uh, Vodian, Konstantinivka, and Paraskovievka. So, the Russians are pushing in this direction. So, nothing uh, new to talk about around here. No details to know about. A uh, similar situation over around here. Uh, we're fighting reported. Uh, around Massimilianivka, it could be either an attack or it could be just a uh, shelling. And the Russians are attacking uh, in the battle of 
Krasnohorivka, but there is no news regarding all these battles. So that's all for this uh, Donetsk front. As and I, a general picture you probably see, probably see Krasnohorivka, Maximilianivka, uh, Paraskovievka, Konstantinivka towards Vodian, and the uh, Russians attacking uh, Uruzhaine towards Makarivka. Ukrainian forces counterattack at Uruzhaine. So this is the strategic picture over at the Donetsk front. We move into the uh, Adyevka front. At the Adyevka front, uh, things are getting a bit uh, much. So, fighting reported at uh, Pervomaiske, Russian forces clash with Ukrainian forces at Netelove, Russian forces attacking towards Yatnobrodivka, Umanske, Semenivka, there is a clash between the two sides, Russian forces attacking towards Novoporovske, Ukrainian forces attacking uh, Slovyove, Russian, Russian forces attacking towards Sokyo, towards Progress, and uh, the, the thing about Progress is this is reported by the Russian Defense Ministry. It's uh, some way uh, corroborating what the Ukrainians reported the day before. Russian forces attacking uh, Vos Vozdizenka, Novo Alexandrivka. Uh, the Ukrainian forces counterattack at Ocheretine, Russian forces attack out of Ocheretine towards Akanhelske. There is some clash reported at Novo Kali Kalinove. I'm not sure where is this clash. It could be here actually. The Russian forces attacking at Karamik and towards Kalinove. So this is the strategic picture over at the ADFK front. Uh, very messy, uh, but you can probably see the, the picture, you know, the, the overall sense of what is currently happening uh, with these arrows. I think it's quite interesting. You can see how this flow of the action. You can see one big arrow in this area here, another big arrow uh, forming in this direction, going outwards. And then there's some clashes around here. And then there's this Russian push out from this area here. So this is the you know, the, the, the current uh, osmosis that is currently happening with these Russian uh, cells. So uh, over at this uh, southern part, um, just to zoom in a bit, uh, there is no details regarding this uh, fighting around here. We still have this fighting towards Yasnobrodivka, you know, the clash at Natalove, the Russian push out of Pervomaiske and Umanske. There is no details regarding this inform the fighting around here. Uh, as I mentioned before, I believe the fighting here will be very slow. Uh, but the Russians do not have incentive to push quickly around this area here. Uh, we move to the central part. Uh, the Russian forces attacking Sokil is now very confirmed. Russian, Ukrainian Defense Ministry and Raiba all reported about this attack towards Sokil. Ukrainian forces, uh, according to the Russians, are attacking Solovyove. They are on a counter-offensive. The Russians are pushing Novoborovsky, according to the Russian Defense Ministry themselves. And uh, there is a clash at Semenivka. So this is the current situation in the central part. In the northern part, of course, is where it gets very messy. So... The uh, first thing first was this uh, Russian push out of Acheritine towards Akanhelske. They have pushed out. Ukrainian forces are trying to counterattack in this area here. So the which means the Ukrainians are trying to hold back the Russians right now. I think they managed to organize the defense a bit. As I mentioned, this is actually a very highly uh very intense and very concentrated defense line. I, I nicknamed this the Citadel. Uh, basically, Citadel. It's similar to the one I named after the, the one at Bakhmut, uh, which is the high-rise building. But no, Citadel simply just means a no defensive, a very strong defensive, uh, no concentration point. Uh, so it looks like a no medieval castle kind of a, no kind of a fortress. So I believe the Ukrainians should hold a stand here. They should and they should. They must hold a stand here, or or else it will collapse two different fronts. So. The Ukrainians must hold this position. The Russian forces are already starting to attack towards Kalinove, and then there's an attack at Akanhelske. So, this is ongoing. Uh, the fighting at Novo Kalinove is interesting. I believe the fighting is actually coming from the other direction. The Russians are clash clashing over, uh, with them, with the Russians pushing out of Kanamik. Russian forces attacking Novo Alexandrivka, and then that's interesting that the Russian Defense Ministry mentioned uh, Vodiv Zenka. So, it could be shelling report, it could be just shelling, it could be the Russians are pushing in that direction. So, and then again, the Russian Defense Ministry mentioned uh, mentioned uh, progress. So it's very interesting that they're moving towards progress. So this is the more northern side, uh, the situation around this the northern flank of this uh, ADFK front. Very, very, very uh, interesting, to say the least. So... That's all from the ADFK front. We move into the New York front. At the New York front, the Ukrainian forces attack at Pivdene, but that's about it. We move into the Bakhmut front. So at, over at the Bakhmut front, uh, oh, I have to zoom out. So Russian forces attack at Klishevka. 
They are attacking at Ivaniske, attacking to Chasifia around the Canal region at Novi as well as Huayho Rivka. So this is the current situation over at Bakhmut. There is a geolocation of uh, Ukrainian uh, artillery getting destroyed uh, by counter artillery, it seems, uh, just off Makove. So that's the situation at Bakhmut. We move on uh, over at the Sivas front. Uh, Russian forces continue their Sivas offensive. Fighting reported at Bilokhorivka, Vukanokanyamsky, Sperne, towards Vimka, as well as Rodolivka. So this is the current situation. Uh, it's pretty much the same with the reoccurrence of uh, Rodolivka returning to us and, um, yeah, and Sperne. So we will continue to monitor and I'll see how this de develops. Seeming, seemingly, this is going to be slow. I believe this is just a pinning operation. It's a diversionary attempt to you know, stretch the Ukrainians' resources. Over at the Kremlin front, uh, we have fighting reported. Uh, there's no fighting reported at the Serebransky Forest Treaty this time around. Uh, we do have the the others like Toske, Yampolevka, Terny, and Nevsky. The Russians are in the initiative. They are pushing in all this direction. And uh, the same thing happening over at the Svetove front with the Russians uh, at making efforts at uh, Gregivka. Over at this is uh, Novo Yehorivka at Novo Selivsky at Stemikivka and Berestove and there is shelling reported at Borova. So the Russians are pushing in multiple directions. You can see these two arrows, these two big arrows currently developing. So as per I mentioned before. So over at the Kupians front, this site is also starting to get a bit interesting. Russian forces is returning their fight at Sinkivka and Petropolivka, shelling at Kupians being reported by the Russians, and the Russians are attacking Kaislivka. And in fact, they are actually also attacking Kotelarivka at the same time. So this push is currently happening with this, uh, this pincer happening in this direction. So if you zoom out a bit of the entire, you know, the this entire uh Kremina, Kupians front, Russians attack at Sinkivka, Petropolivka, uh, Kaislivka, Berestove, Novoselitsky, Semekivka, uh Novoyehorivka, this is this is actually this is what what is this? Uh Krakivka and uh Nevsky, Terny, Yampolevka, Toske. And uh Shalik at Yampolevka and uh Kupians and Borova. So there is one arrow here, another arrow in this direction. And then another one here, another one here. So you can see, yeah, this is just a full frontal assault almost in the at this at this moment. So that's all for this uh, Kupians front. At the border region, there is only one geolocation location being reported by Crimean Capris with a Humvee getting destroyed by a Lancet. And uh, the fact that they actually use a Lancet on a Humvee just shows you know, the lack of, uh, it's not a target reach. Uh, region right now the Kupians run they are hunting for whatever they can find and they find a Humvee so they destroyed it so we will definitely continue to monitor and this is the SIPRAP or summary or situation report for the day of 799 for the 2nd of May press the like button subscribe I saw some people asking though why you double post uh, the first post is always on the DPA wall it will be notified and on the main channel, it's just a delayed telecast just to catch the other people that may not have seen the video. So this is to maximize the revenue for the channel and maximize the reach for the videos and the reports. So pardon me if you see the video again, just remember the thumbnails. The thumbnails are the same. Sometimes the title might be different because for SEO purposes, search engine optimization purposes, but the thumbnail is always the same. So you know, recognize the thumbnail and probably you will not feel cheated <laughs> over watching the same video again thank you and i'll see you guys in the next update